Thank you very much for the nice introduction. As uh, you said, I come from Politecnico di Milano, where I recently graduated in uh, space engineering. And I developed a thesis uh, on an MBSC approach using Arcadia and Capella uh, about a CubeSat mission that we will see later on in this presentation. The thesis was uh, supervised by Professor Michel Lavagna. Uh, so here I am. I'm very happy to be here at the Capella Days 2021. So let's start. We start with the, an overview of the presentation. Uh, we will firstly see the objectives of the, this talk, uh, then a brief introduction to model-based system engineering and its benefits. Then we will see a few slides to just introduce you uh, to the approach developed for this uh, CubeSat uh, design, also introducing the, the mission of this CubeSat. Then I will show you a video of about 10 minutes uh, uh, that is a demo uh, where I will uh, show you uh, Capella and the model itself. And then we will uh, wrap up with uh, some conclusions and final thoughts. So let's start. Uh, here we see in the top left uh, of the slide some um, missions uh, from space agencies and also industries that are currently using or used uh, MBSC for uh, their uh, satellites design. And reading through them, we can assess the benefits of uh, model-based systems engineering. However, there is a sort of a repulsion by engineers who still feel uh, comfortable with the text-based uh, procedures. So um, this uh, talk will uh, is also used to um, improve the MBSC maturity in the space, in particular for small satellites uh, design. We see in the bottom right of the slide um, um, plot by Incosi uh, showing the roadmap of uh, MBSC, showing also the um, interest by the industry uh, toward um, implementing MBSC approaches uh, for uh, uh, systems design. So um, here we see um, on the left, uh, a few main activities that are typically part of a space system uh, design. Uh, this and many other activities can be enhanced uh, by MBSC, which is based on uh, a system model that represents the single source of truth. We see here a few um, of the benefits that MBSC uh, has to a working team, such as clear stakeholders definition, uh, enhanced the requirements, management and traceability, improved team communication, improved uh, access to information across domains, and also an ambiguous system uh, development. We know that uh, to apply MBSC, we need a methodology, a tool, and a language. And today we will uh, see an application using Arcadia and Capella. But briefly see why uh, we decided to use uh, Arcadia and Capella for uh, this project. Um, so let's say classic MBSC uh, based on uh, system L uh, presents some drawbacks uh, because of the object-oriented nature that is uh, like difficult to understand by non-software background engineers. And this generates a sort of um, um, repulsion, as said before, by engineers. Moreover, SysML is just a language and needs uh, a tool and uh, a methodology that implements it. Um, Arcade instead embeds the methodology and the language. Moreover, uh, it's, uh, it does not require to be modeling expert to use it. And so the learning curve is uh, less steep. Moreover, Arcadia imperfectly integrates, is perfectly integrated by the tool Capella, which is open source, intuitive, and also customizable. Now, uh, with this slide, I just want to show um, the steps uh, of a typical space project at the European Space Agency. We see that there are a number of phases from the phase zero to the phase F, so from the system and project conceivement uh, up to the disposal of the product. Uh, the phase zero is um, typically about um, needs identif identification. Then the phase A is uh, about the feasibility of uh, the, the project. Then phase B uh, is a preliminary definition of system solution. 
the phase C is uh, a detail, uh, regards a detailed definition uh, to establish uh, um, and better detail the system. Uh, then phase D with qualification and production. Phase E is the utilization of the product. So uh, in case of a space system uh, can be a satellite. Um, and the phase F that is uh, the disposal. So to safely dispose uh, all the, project, uh, the products uh, launched. Each phase is also scanned by a number of reviews. And I just highlighted with uh, a green uh, um, uh, marker uh, the phase in which the, the project I will present today um, is currently. Actually, uh, the project uh, just uh, concluded the phase A and is uh, currently moving to, toward the, the phase B. So let's um, get started with the... Um, I want to give you um, the CubeSat mission framework. So, uh, what this CubeSat, uh, what are the, which is like the mission statement and the high level objectives of this CubeSat. Uh, it is a 12 unit CubeSat, um, which uh, phase A was in charge of um, uh, Politecnico di Milano for what regards concerns the mission analysis, the GNC, so the guidance, navigation, and control, and all the systems engineering stuff. Uh, the high-level mission goal is uh, to carry out a close-up vis visual inspection of a European space debris. And uh, the goals, uh, other objectives, are to understand the debris status at the time of flight, validate GNC sensors to be used for a next capture of uh, the debris, so uh, with um, a successive mission, and also to reduce the risks of failure of uh, future active deb debris removal mission. So um, this um, project, um, as I said before, um, is, uh, has been in charge, the phase A has been in charge of Politecnico di Milano, and I developed the MBSC um, approach for the systems engineering practices, even though um, the project is still uh, quite uh, linked to a document-based approach, but in case, um, the successive phases will be uh, still hosted by Politecnico di Milano. Um, of course, uh, uh, the MBSC will uh, prevail over uh, the document, uh, uh, the document-based approach. And this is also something that comes from uh, European Space Agency desires. Now, uh, let's briefly review Arcadia. We are actually at the third uh, third day of Cabela Day, so uh, I think we all uh, are we are all acquainted with the, the four levels. But let's uh, review them once again. Uh, we have the operational analysis, uh, with the, which aim is to define what the user of the system need to, need to accomplish, and then the functional and non-functional need analysis, also called system analysis, then the logical architecture and the physical architecture. All these four levels have been developed for uh, this uh, project. And uh, here we see listed the um, activities and tasks uh, performed uh, for each level. Uh, recalling that the great power of MBSC and in particular of uh, Capella and Arcadia is that this, these levels are not only horizontally developed, but they um, have vertical interconnections to um, have a model that is uh, coherent uh, level by level. Then uh, also other tasks such as uh, require activities such as the requirements management phases and modes modeling concept of operations have been uh, developed, plus an additional um, uh, let's say prototype proposal of how to embed um, active um, assembly integration verification and testing activities within the same model that contains the system uh, the, the system modeling and uh, definition. We will see this uh, later on. Now, uh, this slide is just to show the logical path that allowed to derive requirements from uh, the function analysis. We see here the top uh, function perform relative GNC, which contains a number of uh, sub functions. And uh, going on with uh, this uh, functional analysis, we can uh, derive requirements from uh, uh, functions. So this was uh, the logical um, path. This way, uh, requirements are uh, uh, e also easily traced uh, within uh, the, the same um, system functions. Uh, this is important because um, 
uh, we need to uh, also verify each requirement and having them within the same model in which the system is defined is um, risk results to be very effective. Um, so, the, uh, as said before, the project comes from the European Space Agency, so uh, we had to follow the um, ECSS standards. Uh, so, we used Capella requirements viewpoint to model requirements, and we see on the on the left, uh, for example, uh, some requirements types that come from uh, the ECSS, for example, functional requirements, mission requirements, interface requirements, and so on and also some relation types, such as uh, satisfies and refines. Uh, the first one is used to link uh, model elements, such as functions or components to requirements and to trace them, while the refines uh, relation type is used to link requirements between them. This way, um, the requirements trees uh, can be generated, as we will see in the next slide. So in the central part of the slide, instead, we see uh, like the way we store the requirements uh, in uh, in Capella. Um, I want to highlight that um, initially requirements were uh, modeled in um, a sort of MBSC-like in-house developed tool. Um, however, they then uh, they were then uh, transferred uh, to Capella, and now they are here ready to uh, for the next phases of uh, of the project. Um, also, uh, graphical outputs are very nice in Capella to um, graphically see requirements and links with model elements. So moving to the internal uh, requirements allocation, um, we uh, customized, let's say, the operational architecture blank diagrams, um, placing there um, the requirements. And uh, this way, we generated uh, Capella automatically generated the requirements trees. This is uh, very useful to trace backward uh, requirements and also to ensure that there are no um, standalone requirements or floating requirements not linked with the other uh, requirements. So um, this way of uh, using uh, architecture blank diagrams uh, was uh, very useful. Now, uh, we move to um, briefly um, some slides showing the um, the steps followed to apply this MBSC approach to this uh, CubeSat mission. We started from the operational analysis. Uh, here we see the first diagram created, but then we will uh, see it again during the demo. Um, here, just to say that uh, the main outputs of the operational analysis uh, were to define high-level objectives of the mission, define and model uh, high-level objectives of the mission, they involve the stakeholders and their responsibilities through uh, the operational capabilities definition. Then moving to the system analysis, the system capabilities were introduced and each capability was modeled um, further uh, defined by a number of system functions. And so in order to conduct an external functional analysis. Then the logical architecture, thanks to the introduction of the um, uh, components, logical components, uh, uh, model elements uh, allowed to uh, open uh, the system and also introduce uh, the concept of subsystems that for this work are intended um, as logical components uh, containing our other logical components. So here we see the example of the um, telecommunication subsystem, but uh, later on we will see uh, other examples in the demo. Uh, so the main outputs of the logical architecture um, are uh, where the subsistence modeling, internal functional analysis, so a refinement of the functional analysis, and also uh, in functional interfaces, not only uh, internally to the system, but also uh, with the, the involved uh, actors. Uh, in these diagrams, we see that the cyan color uh, was used to uh, identi identify the subsystem. And for example, we see some functional interfaces between the telecommunication subsystem and the onboard data handling one that is uh, here on the right. Lastly, uh, moving to the physical architecture, um, this is a very important step. Uh, as allows to define uh, physical components that will uh, constitute the, the system. 
And uh, moreover, uh, thanks to the concept of physical links, uh, we were able to model physical interfaces between components, not only internally to subsystems, but also between components coming from different subsystems. Also, uh, the mass and cost budgets were um, uh, developed using uh, the mass and price viewpoints of Capella. And the final output was also, um, one of the final outputs, uh, was also the product tree generation by Capella. Moving to other um, systems engineering uh, activities, practices, um, we are here to, we land here to the mods modeling. Uh, mods were modeled at two different uh, levels. Uh, one that was um, on the um, subsystems level and one on the system one. Here we see the GNC subsystem mods. So the guidance, navigation and control modes. And for example, we see that the GNC, the tumbling mode contains a number of functions uh, um, to be executed once uh, the mod is uh, triggered. A uh, great use of trigger conditions was done uh, to also uh, to monitor uh, the complexity of uh, how the system had to be has to be used. Um, I just precise here that uh, mods were modeled at physical architecture, so all these functions that you see listed on the right uh, come from the physical architecture. So uh, this uh, was. A decision because uh, we wanted to exploit um, the the more the most detailed uh, um, functional analysis that is the one um, conducted in the physical architecture. Since uh, functions were refined, functions coming from the logical architecture were further refined in the physical one. Then moving to the uh, system level. Uh, here we see some uh, mods uh, um, that are part of the launch and early operation phase uh, of the mission. And we see the allocation of GNC, the tumbling, for example, the mod we saw before at subsystem level uh, within the system, uh, the tumbling one. Lastly, um, a few words about CONOPS, so concept of operations. Um, we know that satellites are operated rely, relying on detailed concept of operations that are uh, the operations done uh, by the, the system during uh, its life cycle and managed by the mission, uh, control, opera mission control center of um, of the agency. Um, scenario diagrams uh, are exploited to this purpose. Uh, so uh, great use of them was uh, done. For example, here we see a high level view of the LEOP phase. Um, we see the, mo the modes that scan uh, the phase, but uh, also um, very important, um, the, the way the components are activated throughout the mission. Once again, uh, we developed this uh, kind of conops at physical architecture level uh, to exploit the concept of uh, physical com physical node components. Uh, this way, uh, the precise components that will constitute the system um, are activated um, depending on the, the phase in which they, they are. Um, CONOPS were, are also very useful and scenario diagrams then to, uh, since they forced to think about system utilization solutions. And also um, sometimes happened that, um, for example, when um, facing uh, the description of a certain scenario, uh, we had to go back to the, the system uh, model to add uh, some functions that were not present. So it also ensure the consistency and the completeness of uh, the model. Now I move to the demo. I hope you can see it. Okay, so here, here is the classic menu of uh, Capella with the, uh, the different uh, levels. Uh, we will start with the operational analysis. So uh, here um, we open the first diagram that is the one also shown before with the, the modeling of uh, entities and their uh, capabilities, so uh, the high-level services they have to provide. Uh, we can open, for example, this deliver payload to target debris capability, and we see that it involves the launcher and the polymer. 
with this uh, very high level activities, we are um, as, uh, able to understand um, the high level point of view of the system. Opening this other um, uh, capability that is called execute, execute close up visual inspection of the debris, we see the uh, involvement of the target debris and the polymer. So here we are still at very high level, but um, able uh, to communicate the intents of the project to anyone who wants to uh, consult the, the model. And this diagram, that is an operational architecture blank uh, diagram, reports all the activities allocated to uh, the different entities. We see that requirements uh, were or, um, already allocated here to some uh, activities, sorry. We were here. Um, and as I said before, we exploited um, the uh, blank diagrams, architectural blank diagrams to uh, generate the trees. So, uh, for example, um, now uh, moving to this other diagram, we see uh, what I said before. So, uh, this um, requirement tree diagram. Then, of course, this is um, the one re related to the level zero requirements. But if we, for example, move uh, to the GNC requirements, we see that, uh, of course, they are um, uh, higher in number, but also uh, they re they are reconducted to um, the main requirement that was F001. Uh, so this way, all the trace traceability can be monitored. Moving now to the system analysis, uh, the, the, we have to identify uh, what the system has to do without entering into solutions. Uh, so the first step was to model mission and capabilities uh, and also uh, model the, their links to, with the actors uh, involved. Uh, each capability was uh, further refined by a number of uh, functions. Uh, so uh, functional analysis was conducted for each uh, capability. Here, for example, we see the provide power supply with uh, some very simple uh, uh, functions. Um, or also we can move to the provide onboard data handling, handling uh, uh, service. Um, with uh, a further um, internal uh, uh, functional analysis that is still uh, at, uh, let's say, high level. We also see some requirements that are traced in, in diagrams. Uh, also, opening the provide communication services uh, capability, we see um, the white uh, functions that are um, inherited from the operational analysis and the here become uh, system functions. Uh, then I just show you um, the functional tree uh, at the system level uh, with um, a number of functions that define the overall uh, expectations of the system. And all of them have been placed into this uh, uh, diagram um, also to show the interaction, uh, to better show the interaction between the system and the actors. So uh, the activities that were present at operational analysis are now allocated to the system or to the actors. Okay. Here we see just uh, some interfaces between the system and the, the actors. Now we can move to the logical architecture. And so here we have to open uh, the black box um, to better uh, model the, the system. And as I said before, uh, here we introduce the concept of subsystems. Uh, so the gray is used to identify the space segment, so the overall system. The cyan is used to identify the um, different subsystems, uh, which in turn contain a number of uh, logical uh, components. Uh, of course, here are not reported the, the functions, but um, each logical component actually uh, contains a number of, uh, of functions. For example, we see here the electric power subsystem uh, modeled uh, in this way with these three uh, logical components and also with some um, uh, interactions with the uh, actors or, um, or also other uh, logical components. This is just the functional chain description. Moving to the GNC subsystem, uh, 
uh, we open uh, this diagram uh, that is a logical architecture blank diagram related to the GNC subsystem. Again, we see uh, the modeling, so the main components uh, um, that are still not defined as the components that will constitute the system. So, for example, we just read here actuators instead of having, uh, for example, reaction wheels. Um, so, in a generic way, we define this uh, logical components part of the gene system system. Uh, moving to the OBDH, instead, we have these two uh, boards that, that are the doc, doc main and the doc GNC. And also great use of uh, functional chains was, was done to highlight uh, certain uh, uh, system aspects. Uh, lastly, um, here we show the propulsion subsystem with the main engine and the different functions allocated to the main engine. A main engine which also contains uh, uh, other uh, logical uh, components. Then uh, I also show you the... Uh, telecommunication subsystem that I also showed you uh, before. We see, for example, the three functional chains, one for the uplink line, one for the downlink line, and one for the acquired target debris uh, uh, images uh, downlink line, so the data downlink, basically. And lastly, uh, the logical uh, functions uh, breakdown here is uh, shown. We see that much more uh, functions uh, have been developed at the logical architecture with respect to the system analysis. Now, moving to the uh, physical architecture. Um, here, uh, also, here we see that uh, now uh, subsystems become uh, physical node components. And we also um, uh, see the use of um, uh, the price and mass viewpoint. Uh, for example, we see the uh, modeling of the EPS, uh, so the electric power subsystem. Um, we also can notice the um, physical links between uh, components and applying the filter of uh, uh, the introducing the mass and the um, uh, price viewpoint. Uh, we can uh, embed in the single uh, uh, diagram a lot of information as we as we see. This is the price viewpoint, for example. Now, um, of course, uh, each node component contains uh, physical behavior components, which in turn contain uh, functions, physical functions. Here we see the power distribution unit one of the electric power subsystem and uh, uh, the interfaces with the uh, other uh, components from other subsystems. Uh, the yellow color was used to highlight the um, uh, power uh, connections, while the classic red one of uh, physical links was using, used to um, identify uh, hardware connections. So here we see how the power distribution unit uh, works, the power distribution unit one works and all the lines uh, which allow to distribute the power at different voltages to the, the precise components. Then we also had the power distribution unit uh, two with uh, its own uh, um, power connections. Now moving to the uh, GNC uh, subsystem, uh, here is the modeling with all the components that uh, this time are more precise. While uh, in the logical architecture we had for example, uh, just the logical component actuators. Here, and it is open into a reaction wheels assembly, magnet workers. Uh, so uh, now the uh, that logical component became becomes um, precise um, is converted to precise components that will constitute uh, the system. Of course, uh, each component uh, contains logic uh, behavior components and uh, functions allocated to it. We see here uh, the interfaces modeling uh, of the actuators uh, with the main board and also uh, the, the functions, uh, how they communicate between them. And we did the same for the sensors. So how they communicate with the, the main board, how data are collected. This is uh, just a diagram showing the overall interfacings uh, between the onboard data handling subsystem and the uh, uh, GNC subsystem. Um, a high level view, uh, which does not show the, the functions, uh, but uh, still useful to uh, understand the connections between uh, the components. 
uh, a similar one was also um, uh, created for what concerns the telemetry reading um, in charge of the doc main board um, by uh, all the, the remaining uh, subsystems and components. So this is uh, just uh, the diagram. Now, uh, moving to the um, uh, very last uh, part of yeah. No, no, no problem. I just wanted to inform you that I, gi I give you five more minutes and then we'll start the questions. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Uh, lastly, uh, about this demo, um, I just show, uh, said before, the concept of operations. This is a scenario diagram for the um, launch and early operation uh, phase. Um, we see um, the functions uh, allocated to the uh, physical node components, uh, the modes that, that scan the phase, uh, the same modes that can be found um, in uh, this state machine diagram about the launch and early operation phase modes that uh, here is at system level. A similar diagram uh, was created concerning CONOPS uh, uh, for each phase of uh, the system. So in order to show the high level uh, um, usage of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the system, and this is it. And we also see some uh, other mods that are uh, present into another diagram, a uh, state machine diagram, the, which contains the system mods related to the disposal phase. Now, um, to conclude, um, I want to just briefly show this uh, sort of approach, uh, uh, prototype proposal um, of how to integrate uh, assembly integration, verification and testing plan activities within the same model, which contains uh, the modeling of the system. Um, so, of course, this is um, a sort of a proposal, but uh, requires a further uh, formalization. Um, so here we see the example about uh, electric power subsystem testing activities. Um, the starting point is this um, diagram in which the actor uh, responsible of performing the activities is introduced with some uh, physical behavior uh, components, which contain the precise activities to be performed. Um, then we see here this functional chain. So opening the functional chain description uh, diagram, uh, we can create some bridges between uh, the activities and uh, some other functional chains that um, in this case come from uh, the, 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 the model of the system. So for example, we see here the, this EPS doc uh, batteries uh, interface test um, that um, in which uh, the uh, functions about the system are used to, to uh, be traced by an activity that is a testing activity. So this way uh, we can ensure that all system aspects are covered by at least one um, testing or verification or integration activity. And this is very useful um, because we have in a single model uh, two developments that are the system development, but, but also the um, uh, activities related to the its testing. Uh, so everything in one single model. Moreover, uh, each activity can be further um, uh, detailed with a number of um, uh, functions that are uh, in this case procedures. And these procedures uh, um, define um, how to perform that testing activities. Useful also in an operational scenario uh, because uh, we can also monitor through the capella um, through capella the status of uh, each uh, procedure. Um, however, uh, this is as said before is a sort of prototype proposal, um, and we are aware that uh, some rules of Arcadia were violated. Uh, for example, here we saw that uh, the functional chain, some functional chains, uh, were reported in a single diagram, but not connected between. Uh, them through a functional exchange, uh, leading to, as we see here, an invalid chain. However, the advantages um, are still uh, good, uh, but this requires a further uh, formalization of the approach. Uh, for example, uh, we can think about uh, developing uh, um, a sort of uh, add-on, uh, so to customize uh, Capella. So uh, to conclude, uh, 
the goal was to answer the question, is model-based system engineering worth it for small satellites? Um, the answer uh, is yes, because uh, we demonstrated that models is systems engineering practices with respect to text-based approaches. And we saw that um, using Capella and Arcadia was uh, solid, effective and efficient to manage uh, system satellites complexity. Uh, this was a CubeSat that um, still represent um, a very complex system. So it requires um, an optimization of the systems engineering uh, practices and MBSC uh, perfectly, is perfectly suitable uh, for this purpose. We also showed uh, this uh, sort of dedicated uh, ABAT plan uh, modeling. However, some future steps uh, in case um, uh, since the project is ongoing, uh, some future steps uh, can be um, uh, applied to improve the model, uh, for example, including the risk analysis uh, inside the model, um, developing also the class diagrams. Uh, we can think to formalize this uh, AVAT syntax and semantics, and also an overall model refinement toward a phase B design. So uh, I thank you very much for the attention. Um, you can now reply to your questions, and if there is no time, I just uh, leave here my contacts uh, so you can contact me whenever you want. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo, for a very clear talk, I believe. Uh, and we do have time for questions, no problem. And there, are, there is a number of questions, so let's start. First, something that seems to be interesting a lot of people is, do you have plans and what are your plans to extend your model towards simulation? Okay, so thank you for the question. Uh, for now, um, we, we saw this model that is uh, an embryonal uh, form uh, developed for this uh, phase A. But uh, as the model will proceed, we can think to um, ex exploit also the model. Uh, there was a thought to uh, use it, uh, for example, for software development because it provides a solid base for it. And we know that uh, so a satellite software is uh, complicated so uh, we need um, also this kind of detailed um, definition of um, all aspects of uh, the system um, about simulations we we were thinking we don't have a precise plan because uh, we wait we wait for the project to proceed but uh, there was like a thought to um, try to bridge uh, the Capella environment, and in particular the part related to the concept of operations and so the use of scenario diagrams with um, a mission operation software. So this way we can uh, like exploit um, all the um, information embedded in the model um, to be used for uh, a mission operation software. That is the one that will be then run uh, to operate the, the, the satellite. Then uh, if uh, we can talk about uh, this later on. Uh, you can contact me for uh, also to clarify the, the question about which kind of simulations did you expect. Okay, thank you. I believe people who were interesting from the from the chat I gather in execution of the model or connection to Modelica or Simulink, but may, may, if ah, you don't okay. have specific plans, may, maybe you can answer offline because there are a number okay. of questions still okay. there. And the, sec the next one is uh, such a satellite, of course, must have some software. <laughs> That's yeah. true. And uh, did you and how did you incorporate that in the models? Uh, did you do that in the logical, physical level, separate uh, component or subsystems? Okay. How? So uh, for now, the software part was uh, not really included uh, into the model because um, as this was uh, like a first experience, we wanted to assess the benefits of uh, Capella and we focused on uh, the architecture, uh, arch architectural aspects of, uh, of, the, of the system. Uh, so we didn't embed the software um, with all its, its aspects, but uh, we modeled the high level functions that uh, the, the software has to do um, to, to run uh, the, the CubeSat. Okay, and do you have any plan to to continue working on that model, and especially in order to incorporate software aspects? 
Yeah, uh, so in, if the, um, the FSB uh, will still be in charge of uh, Politecnico di Milano, uh, we plan, um, as I said before, to uh, refine the overall model, uh, also including the, the, the modeling of um, uh, the software part uh, within, uh, within the, Capella, the Capella tool. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, did you capture measure of effectiveness, MOE, and measure of performance? MOPs in your model for trade-off analysis? Okay, so um, to answer this question, I have to open a parenthesis. Um, as said before, when I joined the project, um, part of it, uh, part of uh, the design was already done. And initially, uh, they were using an MBSC-like uh, in-house developed uh, tool to store, uh, like, for example, requirements, functions, and, and so on. Um, so um, the trade-off analysis, the, um, uh, the design decisions, uh, most of them were already uh, done. Um, however, the model supported, um, it was uh, up to now uh, mostly used to uh, check the consistency of um, the, the system uh, without um, using it uh, to uh, to derive uh, trade-off analysis because uh, of that reason, because uh, this part of the design was uh, quite uh, already done. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll give you time for one final question and then we'll move on. So I guess the most voted question is, uh, from your experience, at what stage in the product development cycle do CAD systems come into play? CAD systems. Okay. How do the notion of system subsystem variants and so on that are modeled in MBSE trickled to CAD applications like SOLIDWORKS or CAT or any any other similar application? Yeah. Uh, so uh, of course we used um, CAD software to um, model um, our our system in a detailed way, and um, this uh, this. This was also uh, something that was done uh, previously. Uh, so um, when I joined the project, uh, most of uh, the systems engineering stuff was already done. Um, and then we um, assessed the benefits of MBSC, um, trying to move everything into uh, an MBSC environment. This way uh, we proved that uh, actually um, a lot of things that were already done could um, have been uh, facilitated by uh, the application uh, of, uh, of MBSC. And that's the reason why uh, we intend to keep using MBSC uh, for the next phases of the project. Mm -hmm.